The moment where a detective's deductions transforms into a coherent revelation is the snapping point in mystery fiction. No screen production is better at visually reaching these conclusions than BBC's own Sherlock. Sherlock cinematographers creatively employ cinematic techniques to integrate the symptoms of Sherlock's mental disorder into the diegesis. From the very first episode, Sherlock's writers have made it clear that Sherlock has his very own personal view of the world. One of the show's cinematographers, Neville Kidd, describes the show as being composed of two flexible layers of visuals, one of which replicates the sensory overload that Sherlock experiences as a high-functioning sociopath. You're a bloody psychopath. High-functioning sociopath. With your number. Psychologists and fans, however, speculate that Sherlock might be also somewhere on the autism spectrum. Autistic people are often characterised as being overly sensitive to lights, sounds, smells and sights, drowning in a labyrinth of lens flares and colours. In Sherlock's particular case, he observes everything at a minuscule level. His perspective is packed with impossibly fast jump cuts and zooms that pulls the audience from one extreme close-up to another in a remarkable display of striking deductions. This rich cinematography and widespread employment of cinematic ECUs is a feat rarely witnessed within television productions. Since 1936, the BBC has routinely used multiple camera setups for their live production shows. This technique was pioneered for the specific purpose of speeding up television production times. In 1951, Desi Arnaz and cinematographer Carl Frund popularised the technique on I Love Lucy. Although there has been a recent revival of single camera format in television, the visual style is still categorised as significantly more cinematic than the multicam setup. This is due to the multicam's drawbacks in camera angle flexibility and coverage, in particular of extreme close-ups. As such, Sherlock's extreme framing would look contrived within a typical television show. However, rather than take away from the storyline, the ECUs add to Sherlock's character. Sherlock's single camera format, film size budget and production times allows the show to intimately represent his autistic symptoms and unique perspective. The use of intimate ECUs to enhance emotion and cinematic quality has been historically employed by film directors such as Quentin Tarantino, David Fincher, Darren Aronofsky and Paul Thomas Anderson. As such, the shot is cemented in the film industry as a cinematic device. In Sherlock, the edges of ECU frames are often blurred with tilt-shift lenses and sometimes enhanced by the post-production techniques, Morgantics, to create an extreme focus in the middle of still photographs. This process is used to simulate the shallow depth of field of miniature photography. Director Paul McGuigan explains that Sherlock is all about the details. They were able to keep his view of the world by using tilt shift because you can focus on things and still get the sense that you're in a large metropolis. In contrast, when Sherlock is drunk, scenes are devoid of ECUs, rather opting for blurry mid-shots that sway and tilt. His mind process has been slowed and his thoughts numbed, completely opposite to the fast-paced sensitivity of autism. In these techniques and elements, Sherlock ultimately represents a change in the preconception that television is a medium for square box talking rather than spectacle. The show's cinematic devices are alive and they breathe with Sherlock, television's favourite high-functioning sociopath.